obviously the last one just before free to you coffee is <laughs> I never learned or met Louise before and I never knew what she's going to say. But I asked her to leave that up because it's very opposite to some of the points I want to make. Um, I haven't done a PowerPoint because um, that is about the policy. Um, <laughs> Firstly, I'd like to thank you and congratulate the organisers for putting on this inspiring aspect of TAG and um, thank them for allowing me to make a contribution to it. And in some ways, I'm slightly distressed to be here because the whole purpose of making a visual representation was not to bother actually giving a contribution. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, why bother, you know, why have different media of communication if you're going to use one and then have to do the other two? But anyway, so my, um, I've been pondering what I'm going to say in this contribution for a few weeks, and my subconscious has been very hard at work on this. <laughs> but um, when my conscious engaged, I realised I had a lot of snippets to say, but nothing which really presented a coherent contribution. So I'm going to present you with a series of snippets. <laughs> and the, Hopefully, by the time I finish my series of snippets, as you can see, it's very well organised on these <laughs> notes. Um, you, there'll be a connection between where I get to at the end with those snippets and my actual contribution, which is in that direction on the far wall of the corridor against the windows. Very visible now. <laughs> is it? Oh, thank you. Well, that's, that's where it was before I walked in this room. Um, I think um, what this exemplifies for my contribution as well. And there's nowhere to actually hang these, but these are my contributions. Mm -hmm. And there's one of these is on my poster with a couple of paragraphs of explanatory text. Um, but that exemplifies the same point to me. And the headline posted for this one is incidental aestheticism. So the point is that these are not, well, that wasn't designed to be aesthetic, and nor were these designed to be aesthetic, but in the process of producing these as a natural part of my work and professional life, I actually begun to feel rather pleased with them. <laughs> think, yes, you know, I like these, I want to keep these. They're, you know, they're meaningful and decorative. And um, at the time when I did this, maybe more than 10 years ago, I thought, yes, I'm going to hang them on my office wall, you know, they exemplify my work and life and define it. And in some ways, that's exactly the same. It's, you know, um, I had the right word in my head when I was sitting there, but I've forgotten it now. But it's, <laughs> it's meaningful, but it's elusive. You know, it's, it's, it's very decorative. I, mean, I could imagine that in the tape, really. But it's arisen in, in an unconstructed way out of a process of carrying out archaeology. Um, and then what these things do in particular is you know, obviously I know the meaning, I constructed the meaning, and the part of my life was the part of my working life over which these arose was to communicate that meaning and explain it. Um, but they condense and encapsulate quite a complicated sets of meanings into this one layer. And it's all about the lines on the maps of characterizing different parts of the landscape. And basically these were just a tool which I posted off to Wessex Archaeology. And someone in their graphics department scanned on the boundaries, and then those boundaries feed into the um, planning process, and people decide whether they're going to build housing, you know, whether they're going to build roadways on the basis of where these lines are. Um, then my second, my next post it, I'll just keep going on my post it, so you've got to be to stop, or the reach an end of an advertise. Is, is it hard? And then after probably at least five or six seconds of reflection, I came up with a working definition of art to decide whether it matched it. And it was a material stroke visual expression of an idea or value. But well, actually, yes, it is art, because fitting that definition. And also it fits in with the topic of this session, so it is a visual representation, even though it wasn't designed as art. And I sort of began to think of it as an unpolished piece. It's you know, what, what the butler saw. But it's sort of caught in the act bit of archaeology. So what it gives you an opportunity to do, and on my poster, you'll see a more recent iteration of the same process. But on that second bit of my poster, you'll see all my hand-drawn notes on 
what the different layers mean, different sources of information, my own initial ideas of how things relate to each other. So it's a chance to look under the hood of this process of constructing meaning, <coughs> meaning of a particular part of the landscape. Um, just to encapsulate a few, or summarize a few of the ideas about the material I produced, I sort of partly think of it as a meditation on layers. And I was interested to know when I started reading about what some other people were doing, the word layer kept on cropping up. And so I was quite pleased with that. And there's, I think there's a trio of layers in my piece. Um, there's the accreted past. I think the past is happening in a place. And over you know, millions of years, or hundreds of thousands of years, or thousands of years, things have happened. Many of these leave no traces, but some of them leave traces, and we engage with those traces as archaeologists. And then there's the present day discourse of narrative and interpretive layers in terms of we impose a meaning or an understanding on the landscape we inhabit, and then that informs our thinking about it. And then the third sort of layer is the um, invisible conceptual digital GIS layer, which this um, then becomes, and although that's actually an invisible layer, it's the absolutely important layer which influences what, in an archaeological planning sense, what happens in the past of the landscape this has been applied to. And then, going on from that, I felt this whole process, the psychological process of thinking about the landscape in this way, it's layers of narrative and layers of meaning, it um, exemplifies what actually it means to be a human being in the world today. You know, we live in this landscape, we have meanings about it. In the past, maybe monuments and material culture have maintained and reinforced that structure of meaning, that how we inhabit this landscape. So I feel that this exemplifies both how that was done in the past, and also that's what we're doing in the present, and we're carrying out this, this curious business of being archaeologists and looking to the past in the present. So we're sort of you know, rising the ridge of those two layers of <coughs> areas of meaning. Um, approaching the end. <laughs> um, so finally, just to make a slightly more mainstream archaeological point, this is an approach to dealing with the heritage and development control, which is being called the historic environment framework. And it's, I think, I don't know how many different parts of the country impose this approach as part of development control. But everyone agrees it's a very useful thing to do because once you've got your lines on the maps, and this is something planning archaeologists always have said they wanted, you know, in the seminars I've been to the last 30 years, you know, you say, what do you want? They say, we want lines on the maps. <laughs> and so this is what we're giving them. And once you've got these lines on the maps, planning consultants and people who design new villages, they can work with this and they can say, right, we can't have our school here, we can't have our road here, but we can have something here, and we can have a park here where we won't build, but we can preserve more course and archaeology, and we can make it accessible, and we can construct a landscape of sculptures which inform the inhabitants of this new landscape about its heritage. So everyone agrees that this historic environment framework is a really important and useful approach to developing the landscape in the present day. Um, so I think actually, possibly sooner than anticipated, we've now got to the end of my series <laughs> of And hopefully, like the end point of what I'm saying now is hopefully the title of my poster called Layered History, Storied Layers, is now being slightly elaborated on. Thank you. <laughs>